Welcome back. The panel is here. NBC News senior White House correspondent Kelly O'Donnell, Jonathan Martin, senior political columnist for Politico, Democratic pollster Cornell Belcher, and Lonnie Chen, a fellow at the Hoover Institution and former Romney campaign policy director. Thanks to all of you for being here. Kelly, let me start with you. There's this new Wall Street Journal poll, which shows that former President Trump is leading President Biden by four points. Take us inside Biden world. How concerning is this? And I know within this context, you've got new reporting on how they might use the issue of abortion, which we've obviously been talking about here in 2024. The first reaction is that bad poll numbers are something that is somewhat baked in in the minds of people who are close to the president. They've seen it before. And then they turn quickly and look at recent elections and say, when voters are asked to not just respond to a survey, but to cast a ballot, they have done so in ways that match up with some of the president's priorities. We saw it in November in Virginia with mm -hmm. the state legislature. We saw it in Ohio with respect to abortion. On abortion, uh, the new reporting is that the campaign will more aggressively tie Donald Trump to every instance mm. in America where there is a restriction, a ban on abortion, when there is abortion in the news. You were talking with Senator Romney about the Texas case to say Ken Paxton, the state attorney general there, was endorsed by Donald Trump. Mm. And so they want to link Trump in every way to the change in people's lives with respect to abortion. And to then say that is the kind of position you would have. When when Donald Trump talks about day one yeah. uh, being an authoritarian, a dictator, they're saying day by day mm. he's becoming more autocratic. And so if they look at something practical like abortion, that's a way to get at it. Democracy might be more theoretical for many Americans. And so abortion is a way where they can link him to that day by day. Fascinating. Jonathan, you heard Mitt Romney, a couple of things that stood out to mm -hmm. me. One, he did not rule out voting for President Biden. Yes. Number two, he said he'd like to see Joe Manchin run. Yes. Is that realistic? I mean, we've been trying to get no. an answer out of Joe Manchin. <laughs> uh, I don't think Joe Manchin is running for president. And I think uh, Mitt Romney is going to have a choice next fall that he's not thrilled about. But I think ultimately he will come down on the side of picking President Biden. It's a matter of how public he is about that and whether or not he tries to avoid the question a few more times between now and then. But that's the option. And by the way, not just Mitt Romney. I think a lot mm. of what I would call kind of the pre-Trump GOP figures in this country, George W. Bush, Liz Cheney, they're not thrilled about Joe Biden. But that's going to be the option they have. And I think they're going to be challenged next year, especially if President Trump keeps talking in the sort of autocratic fashion of you don't like Biden's policies, but do you really want this as the alternative, which is why you see so many people like Romney say, maybe there'll be a different Democrat. Maybe somebody else mm -hmm. will emerge I can vote for because they're desperate to not have that Biden Trump option. But that increasingly seems like that is where we're going right now. And so I think that they're going to have to pick. It sure does. Lonnie Chen, you were the policy director for Mitt Romney when he was running for president. A lot of people want to compare this moment, a lot of Democrats, to 2012. They say, hey, remember when former President, Ob <laughs> former president Biden, or Obama, I should say, was locked in a fierce fight with Governor Romney, but is it the same as 2012? I don't think so. I mean, I went back and looked at the numbers as an example. In 2012, at this point, uh, in that campaign, Barack Obama either had a narrow lead or in some cases he has as much as an eight-point lead uh, in a head-to-head -head against Mitt Romney. The challenge in this election is really twofold for the president. I think, first of all, uh, the issues on which he's weakest, the economy and immigration in that Wall Street Journal poll, happen to be the issues that Americans care most about, if you believe that poll. The other challenge he has is that, look, and I think this applies to Donald Trump as well, they are both equally disliked, to Jonathan's right. point. Mm -hmm. If you look at their very unfavorable ratings, these ratings of great intensity, sort of saying, who do you really like, who do you really dislike, Donald Trump and Joe Biden are equally disliked with an equal amount of fervor, 50 percent. It's a remarkable yeah. number. This is the election no American wants. It's yeah. not just the elites. Americans don't want this election. It, it is extraordinary. Well, well look, yeah. I, I, I think there are some differences. There's some huge differences between now and 2012. Uh, but I will say this. In the public polling, no, actually, uh, Mitt Romney was ahead of Barack Obama. And in, in the public polling, internal polling, it was different. But let me say this about, about, about the polling. 
enough with all the polling, mm. right? It's not predictive of, of what's going to happen in the, in the presidential race. Even though there are a number and, of polls and, pointing to the listen, same thing? Listen, this is, this is why we use polling in, in campaigns. This is what we use for polling for a campaign. We use polling to see what the problem is and how you build a campaign to fix the problem. When I see that 47-43 number, I'm not at all concerned mm. about, about what's going to happen in the future. By the way, I'm actually emboldened because I know, quite frankly, where Donald Trump's going to be. He gets 47, 46 percent. He, he wins by subtraction, not at not addition. Now, underneath that poll, what you have there is what I call the Obama continuum, right? These, these younger voters who are not necessarily st strongly tied to either Democrat or Republican, although they're, they're a lot more progressive on, on, on most issues. And that's where Biden right now is suffering the most. And these are not going to ever be Trump voters. So the yeah. campaign they're going to have to build work is one to, to, is work to bring those young voters back. John, but the risk is that they don't vote at all or even more, that ominous, is a risk. Or mm. more, more ominously for Biden. You have 10,000 voters or more in Madison, Wisconsin, Ann Arbor, Michigan, who pull a lever for Jill Stein or Cornell West. That is devastating to Biden's coalition. That's 2016 all over again. That, see, I'm more worried about their third party yeah. voting yeah. than I'm worried about Trump doing. And the campaign Trump tells Trump me voted. that they are aware of that. And so they don't believe that with black and brown voters and young voters, they can just do traditional get out the vote. Yeah. They have to do persuasion, yes. active persuasion to remind voters about things like the Trump Trouble spots you mentioned, yeah. economic issues. And but, one but of also, the, go ahead. Really quick, but also, look, I, I, I came out of the field of the poll two weeks ago, and this this is what actually helps him, right? It's the comparison to, to Trump. When I ask African American voters, talking about African American voters, uh, a close in list of what's the, the greatest threats to the African American community: inflation, crime, the reelection of Donald Trump. Mm. The reelection of Donald Trump by a plurality of African American voters think that that's the greatest threat to the African-American community. Mm -hmm. Not inflation, not crime, but Donald Trump. Well, we got that's a new, motivator. That's a motivator. We got a new data point in the race, of course, this week, which is that the son of President Biden has been indicted yet again, and that Republicans are moving to open an impeachment inquiry into President Biden, despite there not being a link yet. Here's what he had to say about that inquiry this week. Can you explain to the Americans uh, to Americans admit this impeachment inquiry, why you interacted with so many of your son and brother's foreign business associates? I'm not going to comment that I did not, and it's just a bunch of lies. You didn't interact with many uh, of their lies. business associates? I did not. There's oh. lies. Kelly fired up there. We should note those comments were made before Hunter Biden was indicted. What is the strategy to deal with this inside the White House? It's painful. It's personal. They want to put it in that category. Mm -hmm. They also say that in 2020, Hunter Biden was a, a fixture of the Republican campaign. And I think they want to talk about voters able to separate the candidate's son from the candidate. And they think Republicans are trying to use this to diffuse the legal troubles yeah. of Donald no, Trump. I mean, find the, me the Biden White House advisor who's going to go to the boss and say, we need a new strategy about your son there who's, right. well, uh, who's been indicted. They're they not going to have that conversation with him. Money's the waters. That's the challenge that they have. Of course. Is that, that this is an issue on which they could potentially prosecute Donald Trump. They're going to have to turn this into a referendum on Donald Trump. Yes. And if they're going to use the issue which they want to use, mm. which is the character of Donald Trump, this muddies the waters for the White House. And that's the challenge here is really how do they overcome this? And someone has to speak truth to power I, on this. I just think someone I, has to make that I just, point. I just think what, what your child does, as, as most parents understand, it's not muddy my waters, right? That what, you know, if your child gets in trouble, that that's not muddy my waters. Here's the other thing. Look, don't take it from me. Take it from Chip Roy, right? Republican. What is the House, what, what is, have House Republicans done that they can run on? Right. Last time I checked, I, I've been in focus groups for the last two months. No middle American working mom is bringing up Hunter Biden. She's bringing up costs. She's bringing up student and loans. Yet, she's not talking about Hunter Biden. And, this is and, the issue they want yet, to go into. And yet to, Republicans are, are winning on the generic ballot. And yet it's yeah. the case that Republicans are always at this more time winning on the generic Because ballot. of the image right. of what he says. It's not just what he says. It's how he looks in the presentation well, right. that is jarring yeah. Americans. All right, folks, we have to leave it there. This was fantastic. <laughs> you don't need me here. At all. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.